Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. I'm E.G. Marshall. There are those of us who are civilized, and there are those of us who are still savages. We who are civilized have mastered many of the major mysteries of science. We transplant hearts. We walk on the moon. The savages neither read nor write and lead rather chancy lives in jungles and deserts. We who are civilized tend to look down on those who are savages without stopping to think that the savages also feel the same way about us. What are all those people standing around for? They are waiting. Waiting for you. Why? What am I supposed to do? Perform a miracle. Ha! A miracle? How can I perform a miracle? You're a god, aren't you? Oh, no. De- definitely not. It- it's all a mistake. I am afraid they will never believe you. You had best perform the miracle. Our mystery drama, The God That Failed, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are a great many outmoded slogans, such as Manifest Destiny and The White Man's Burden. But in their day, which was not too long ago, really, they represented the popular thinking of the most powerful nations of the civilized world. It all had to do with the belief that the peoples of the West were the only ones fit to rule. Today, of course, this concept has become obsolete. But like all fixed ideas, it dies hard. And it still has its adherents. Yes? Who? Senator Blaisdell? Uh, uh, no, 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 tell him I'm... Uh, uh... Oh, what can you really tell him? He knows I'm here. All right, have him come in. I better take a tranquilizer. Good morning, Senator. Blaze, well, come in, come in. Uh, you're sure you're not busy, Everett? Oh, not too busy to see you, Blaze. Uh, sit down, sit down. What can I do for you? Uh, why am I being sent to Alistair? You mean Alessa? Uh, whatever, uh, however you pronounce it. Well, strictly speaking, Blaze, you're not being sent anywhere. <laughs> no, this is your opportunity to visit the newest member in the family of nations. And if it should apply for aid, you would know the situation firsthand. You would have determined the facts. I don't have to know the facts. I'd vote against the appropriation anyhow. Well, now, Blaze, as a member of the highest legislative body in the nation, you should be informed as to conditions abroad. Oh, well, why can't I look things over in Rome? Oh, now, be fair, Blaze. Last year, you went to Paris. Hastings is going to London. Well, as chairman of the committee, I've got to give the minority members a little plum now and then. It keeps them fresh and sweet. <laughs> but, uh, Alice, sir, uh, I, I never even heard of it. Well, it's a brand new one. Uh, where in Thunder is it? Well, uh, it's in Asia somewhere, I think. Oh, now, don't worry. We'll see that you get there, all right? No. If it's all the same to you, Everett, I'll believe I'll sit this one out. I need someone to go to a lesser. Why? Well, it's a brand new place. This is very serious fact-finding mission. It would do your image no end of good, Blaze. It would present you as a very dedicated, hard-working legislator. Uh, what's, uh, what's to do there, Everett? 
Well, I don't, I don't know. But I did find out what the name of the place, a lesser, means in their language. Yeah. It means... <laughs> this is absolutely on the level, Blaze. It means the place of the willing maidens. Huh. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, let me think about it. Well, suppose we make arrangements for you to fly out there next Wednesday. <laughs> This is Lynn Longstreet out here at Dulles International Airport in our nation's capital. And the name of the program, as you know by now, is On the Run. Here is where we catch the movers and shakers. Tonight, we've caught Senator Bob Blaisdell. Hello there, Lynn. Senator Blaisdell? Uh, call me Blaze. <laughs> I just used a little figure of speech there. I said we had caught Senator Blaisdell. I hope my listeners don't read too much into that. After all, everyone knows you're supposed to be the catch of Washington... How have you managed to remain single so long, Senator? I uh, suppose I haven't met her yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, may we ask what you're doing at the airport? Uh, as you know, I'm taking a trip to investigate conditions in Alice, Well, that's supposed to be a very remote part of Asia, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's practically all jungle. Oh. Yes, uh, that's why I asked to go there. You asked to go there? Oh, I had to beg my committee chairman to let me take the trip. Well, now, why would you want to go there, Senator? Why? Uh, I want to study conditions in Alice, uh, Economic, social, political. Well, Senator, I believe you'll have to. I don't think you'll find much else to occupy your time and attention. It's been great talking to you. You've just heard Senator Bob Blaisdell caught on the run en route to the brand new nation of a lesser in Asia. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, what? Uh, 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 but, Mr. Prime Minister, don't you applaud the performance after a concert? Oh, no, no. Uh, well, why not? Because the purpose of a concert is to create serenity, is it not? Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, right, I guess so. Hand clapping will disturb the state of serenity, will it not? Uh, I suppose it could. Therefore, it defeats the purpose of the concert. Okay. Now we shall visit a Teresin factory. Oh, you have uh, factories in Alice, sir. We have places where people gather together to create, yes. Ah, uh, where is it? Why, it is just across the road. Ah, uh, what do they make there? Teresins. Uh, Teresins, uh, 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 what are those? Little bells which the dancing girls wear on their fingers and toes. Oh, the most beautiful little bells in the world. Uh, come, you shall hear them for yourself. Did I not tell you of this beauty? <laughs> you surely did. Uh, Prime Minister, how many people do you have working here? It depends. Uh, depends on what? On who will be here on any given day. Uh, you mean you don't have a steady crew? Steady uh, permanent. Uh, um, people who show up every day uh, work a stated number of hours. Stated uh, by whom? Well, uh, by agreement. Uh, uh, a man agrees to work so many hours per week in return for which uh, he will You get... must excuse me. How can a person agree in advance to work a stated or given number of hours per week? How? Well, he has to. But... How does he know if the spirit will move him on any particular day? Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, are you putting me on? Putting you on what? Uh, 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 look, you got about, what, 50 men working here now? Yes. Well, it appears to me they're all doing the same thing. Of course. Well, isn't that a waste of manpower? How can manpower ever be wasted? Well, you could have a kind of uh, production line. You see, one fellow could start with a sheet of silver and put it on a form. Another could hammer it. Another could shape it. Another could attach the clapper uh, uh, and so on. But which one of them would have made the bell? Which one? Uh, all of them. It would not work. <laughs> Why not? It works in our country. Does it? 
By your favor, may we have silence? Now, Mr. Blaisdell, Tipu here has just completed a bell. See how beautiful it looks. Mm. And now, Tipu, may we hear it ring? Hear how harmonious? Why? Because Tipu has put the spirit of himself into the bell. But suppose Tipu and Sadhu and Purun and all two or three others had worked on the bell together. They are men of different temperaments. And these conflicts would sound in the bell. The music would not be pure. All I'm talking about is just a simple production line. Uh, it's the way we turn things out. Uh, effectively, efficiently. But harmoniously. These things that you turn out, do they run perfectly? So many different spirits enter into them. And these different spirits find themselves in conflict. That is why a product will break down, you see. That's, that's ridiculous. I am sorry I have offended you. No, 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 no. I, I have offended you. I, I certainly don't have the right to uh, uh, criticize your customs and uh, beliefs. But it's wrong. Look. Look at all this silver. Yes. We mine the finest silver in the world here. And what do you do with it? You waste it on these silly bells. Do you realize there's a shortage of silver in the world? How unfortunate. You could export silver and make enough money to transform your entire economy. Into what? You could build roads, airports, factories, uh, oil refineries, uh, shopping centers. For what purpose? You could modernize your armed forces. What armed forces? You, uh, you, uh, you mean you have no armed forces? No. But that's impossible. I'm sorry it seems to distress you. How do you protect yourself against your enemies? We have no enemies. How is that possible? Because we have no roads, airports, factories, oil refineries, or shopping centers that they might want to take from us. Senator... It has been a long day. Yeah, it sure has. The sun has begun to depart for his home. May I escort you to your hotel? Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, oh, say, listen, tell me. Is there anything to do around here at night? Oh, yes. We have a most fascinating activity. Would you care to join us? Sure. Then come along. Uh, where? To the temple. We are going there to spend the evening in meditation. Oh, uh, why don't I join you there after dinner? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. How can one possibly hope to arrive at a state of pure meditation on a full stomach? Everett, Everett, listen to me. Please? I can't hear you very well. You've just got to listen. I think we have a bad connection, Blaze. Yeah, well, well, we're lucky to have any kind of connection. I... I can't even begin to describe this country. I'm so glad you're having a good time. The next commercial plane, the next civilian plane service won't be for another month. You want to stay there another month? Why? Could you divert a military transport? Are you suggesting we sell military transport planes to a lesser place? No. Well, put it all in the report. I want you to send one to get me out of here. Don't fall in love with the place, please. I want you back before we reconvene. I need your vote. Now, you just... Uh, Everett? Everett? Oh, no. And here we are. I, uh, I must say, this official state automobile of yours has seen better days. But it seems to have found a harmony. Yeah. Uh, is that the plane? Yes. It is the official airplane of the government, and it is at your service. Yeah, well, no offense, Prime Minister, but it uh, looks as if it's being held together with rubber bands and scotch tape. It is being held together by harmony. Yeah. Uh, do you suppose it could get me to India? It has never been required to fly that distance. Does the pilot think he can make it? I cannot say. I have never tried it. You? I am the Secretary of Air. Mr. Secretary, if you're game, well, let's go. 
You mean it's all like this? Yes, Mr. Senator. Thousands and thousands of square miles of jungle. <laughs> Virgin forest. Do you know the wealth you've got here? All you have to do is exploit it. I'm sure there's gold in those streams. The minerals in those mountains. And you know something? I'll wager there's oil, too. Perhaps this country should be developed. Hey, with the proper know-how, you could transform yourselves into one of the richest nations in the world. Why should we wish to do that? Because, look. Uh, I'll just have to put it to you straight. How long do you folks want to remain ignorant, uh, backwards, and superstitious? How long do you want to fight against progress? Uh, I'm... I'm sorry I had to put it that, that way. I... You mean it truly, yes? Uh, yes. I am sorry to hear that because it means we are beginning to lose harmony. Hmm? Uh, what are you talking about? Listen. Uh, oh, what is it? The, uh, the engine. Something, something's wrong with the engine? The engine seems to have lost its harmony. Yes, the harmony is gone. Well, uh, uh, do something. We uh, we can't crash. Not here. Not in the middle of this jungle. Harmony. Is that why mechanical things work? And lack of harmony? Is that why they malfunction? It's easy to answer quickly and say no because... That's a reasonable answer. But is it also a satisfactory answer? For a more enlightening answer, we shall need the second act. East meets West, and we're supposed to have the inevitable conflict between them. But why? Obviously, it would seem because their philosophies appear to be so different. But are they really? Could the basic differences merely be matters of rhetoric? Isn't it true that all of us, civilized or barbarian, are groping for the answers to the same question? Do something! The engine, it does not respond. What's wrong? There appears to be a complete disharmony. We're going to crash? Yes. Right in the middle of the jungle? Yes. No one will ever find us. That is probably true. What can we do? Compose yourself. Try to achieve harmony. Let's do something. Compose yourself. Soon we shall be one with the great unity of the universe. There's got to be something. Soon we shall achieve complete serenity. We're going to hit. We're going to... Established that, but uh, uh, who? Uh, oh, my head. Uh, where am I? This is my home. I can't make things out too well to, just yet. What kind of a place is it? You would call it a cave. Yeah? What would you call it? How, how, did, how did I get here? They brought you to me. They? The hunting party. They saw the great bird fall from the sky. Oh, now I remember the airplane. And they said, there must be a god inside. A god? They were right. There were two, but one was dead. Malo? Malo is dead? The other god is dead. No, 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 no but, but, but we're not gods. Then how is it you fly through the sky inside a large bird? Look, how do I get out of here? I have to get back to my country. 
Your country? Uh, yes, the United States. Uh, I cannot understand. It's across the ocean. Ocean? Uh, I do not know that word. Uh, look, your country here is called Alasar. Al... Esser? Yes. And your prime minister, Mr. Marlow, uh, the one who you say was killed, was flying me out of here. Marlow? He was flying me to India. India? You've never heard of India? No. Whatever. Meanwhile, I've got to get out of here. Why? Is my home not pleasing? I'm sure it's it's very nice, yes. Am I not pleasing? Well, yes, I would say so. Uh, that is, I mean, I mean, you are. Uh, actually, you're a very good-looking lady. Uh, but I have to go home. You can never return to the sky. Uh, to my own country. Where can that be? Let us say it's beyond the jungle. But there is nothing beyond the jungle. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Everyone knows the jungle is surrounded by the great cobra. And he swallows up all who go beyond the edge of it. Even gods. Surely you can't believe that. But it is the truth. You must be calm, my lord. Soon you shall be well again. And then we will be married. What? Married? Yes. Uh, that is why they brought you to me. I am the most worthy. After all, I am the daughter of the master. You have sent for me, my lord. You must be the master. So I am called. Uh -huh. You appear to be an intelligent man. So uh, let's you and I get down to the nitty-gritty here. Hmm? Let's do away with this uh, master and my lord business. I do not understand. Oh, come on now. None of the voters are around. Hmm? We can talk off the record. But, my lord... Don't try to come on like some hick. Hmm? Not with me, anyhow. I cannot follow what my lord is saying. Who are you trying to kid? You know what it's all about. You, you speak English, can't you? This is the sacred language of the gods. <laughs> Look, I don't want to get in any deeper. And the master, who is also the high priest of the tribe, learns it as part of the rites of initiation and teaches it to his own children. Yeah, well, the point I'm trying to bring out is... My daughter Aurela learned it because she will one day become high priestess. I'm trying to say that you learned it from somebody, and uh, that same somebody must have set you straight about uh, the nature of the world. No, no, these were the sacred books. They were found many years ago near the body of a dead god. My great-grandfather, who was master at that time, he learned to unravel the mystery of the language of the gods. Yeah, sure. Believe what I say, my lord. There were pictures that made one understand the words. Okay, okay. What you're telling me is true. Why not, hmm? Uh, look, meanwhile, I have my own problems. I have to get home. Yes. My daughter tells me you say that. Surely even a god must accept the fact that there is no way to go home. Awake, my lord. Hmm? What? Uh, what? What is it? Our wedding day. Uh, look, Aurela. Come. We must walk hand in hand through the village. I, I don't want to get married. Oh, my lord, I am ugly. Uh, no, 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 I, I didn't say that. I do not please you. The fact is, you are very pleasing. Oh, then my lord has no reason not to marry me. Uh, I happen to have... Uh, no, 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 uh, let it go. We must let all in the village see us. And then we shall be wed. Look, Aurela, I don't think we're communicating. Come. Everyone in the village awaits us. All the unmarried maidens. Oh, how they envy me. I, I just wish I could explain why... Uh, why... Uh, oh, oh, never mind. We will have the ceremony. All the people will follow us as we walk to the home of the master. And he will be awaiting us. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just wish someone around here had some sense. Let there be silence. My daughter Aurela has found favor in the eyes of a god. This is the most blessed day in the history of our people. For her sake and for love of her, a god shall now live in our village. My lord, I give you my daughter, my most priceless possession. I still think we should talk this over. Talk? What is there to say? Whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell these people the truth. What truth? The truth about me. They already know the truth about you. They know you're a god. Well, I'm going to put a stop to that nonsense right now. Uh, listen, everybody. My name is Bob Blaisdell. I'm a United States senator. Here in Alistair. On a fact-finding tour. There is no point in going on. I came to get an idea about the natural resources of the country and so forth. And uh, let me say I'm favorably impressed. Oh, you need say no more. Uh, that's what you think. <laughs> you can see how they're listening to every word I say. Of mm -hmm. course. Because you're a god. They listen with respect. <laughs> but they have no understanding. In this entire village, only you and I and Aurela can speak English. I promise you will be quite happy here. Uh, I'm trying to tell you I can't stay. But you have no choice. It is your fate. Even the gods must accept their destiny. I happen to know what my destiny is, and it isn't here. It must be. That is why all your brother gods have sent you to our village. Please listen because to me. Because they know how much you are needed. You will heal our sick and keep the river from flooding our crops and protect us against the ravages of war with our hostile neighbors. Let's get something straight. If you think I'm going to spend the rest of my life with a bunch of ignorant, barbarian savages... My lord... You... Even a god will behave like just another man on his wedding day. He will speak utter nonsense and dance and shout. And do you know why? It's because he cannot contain his happiness. <laughs> Certainly a wedding day may be something to sing and shout and dance about, but this one, well, it does appear to be one of the shotgun sort, wouldn't you say? However, there are those who claim that weddings of that particular type turn out the happiest in time. But for that data, we must explore the third act. Once again, we must use the well-known exclamation, O oh, tempore, O oh, mores, which translates as, Oh, what times and what customs. It's bad enough when you have to submit to times and customs that are a part of your own society. But how must it feel to put up with customs you never even heard of? Awake, my lord. The sun has risen, and you are needed. Uh, needed? Hmm? For what? You are needed by your people. What do they need me for? What do the people need a god for? To heal the sick, stop the floods, end the wars. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Oh, yes, my lord. Well, I couldn't even do it in the United States Senate. <laughs> Listen, my lord. The people are assembled. Look, tell them to go home. Please. How may I say such a thing to the people? But I'm not really a... Oh, boy. What, uh, what does this one want? She wants you to take away the evil eye. What evil eye? The one that is causing so much bad luck. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to do that? Well, surely, my lord, you must know a way. Look, I didn't ask for this job. My lord, your servant is waiting. Yeah, well, uh, tell her I'll try to come up with something. Oh, she would not understand such an answer. What am I supposed to do? Could you give her a sign? What kind of sign? The 
kind of sign that will turn away the evil eye. I, uh, I don't have anything in mind right now. <laughs> she will stand here and wait. What do you mean, for how long? For the rest of her life, if necessary. Oh. Well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll give her a sign. Oh, thank you, my lord. Uh, tell her to, um, cross the middle finger of her left hand over the forefinger. Like so. See? Yes, I... I see. There. She's doing it. And, uh, now the same thing with the right hand. Fine. Uh, now with those fingers still crossed, let her wave her hands in the air. That's right. Good. Now, let everybody ring the bells. Oh, my Lord, what a fantastic charm. My Lord. Yes? What can I do for you, Master? We need your advice. About what? The rains shall come soon, and the river will rise, and many may drown. Well? We humbly ask you, my Lord, to prevent it. To prevent the river from rising? Prevent the people from drowning. How? If we knew, my lord, we should not trouble you for a miracle. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe something could be done. Yes, my lord. Let me think. I was on the Rivers and Harbors Committee. What were the engineers saying? You throw up a dam. That's right, but... But where? Let me see... We need a dam. A dam? Yeah. We have to dig. Dig? Where, my lord? Well, let's hope I can guess at the right place. I will need a couple hundred men. To do what? To work on the dam. Work? In what way? To dig. To fill up sacks with earth. To build a wall. But it is beneath the dignity of our people to do such things. In that case, the rivers are going to flood. Not if you command it to stop. It, it can only be stopped only by building a dam. It can also be stopped if you so command it. How? By speaking a charm. By uttering the magic words. <laughs> Where? There is a very sick child. I'm not a doctor. The child will die. What do you want me to do? Save him, my lord. He's... he's very feverish. Oh, yes, my lord. I suppose we'd better try to get the fever down. Uh, get some water, hmm? Cool water and some wet claws to sponge him. This his mother and father could have done without you. Yeah, well, let me think. What else can you do in the case of a fever? I don't have any antibiotics. Well, say something. What? Some magic words. Hey, quinine. I think it comes from the bark of a tree. Oh, except I don't know which tree. Uh, do you have such a tree around here? Are you calling upon the spirit of a tree? Hmm, I don't know. It could be the water. D does this kid drink the water from the river? All the children do when they swim there. Yeah, well, he's not to do that anymore. Why not? Because, uh, in a general way, the animals go there to drink, and you should drink only the pure water from the spring. That's it. No more drinking from the river. But our people have always used the water from the river. No more. But this will make the river god angry. Yeah, well, well, let's take that chance. It would be better if you could say some magic words. My lord, I have come to beg of you. Destroy our enemies. How? By your magic. Uh, you know what you should do? Get together with those people. Meet with them? Why not? It has never been done. Look, say to them, you folks have your piece of the jungle, we've got ours. You stay home, we'll stay home. You don't raid us, we don't raid you. We must never speak to them. Why not? Because it will anger the god of war. Then, uh... What do you want me to do for you? Cast a spell on them. My lord. What is it? The woman who complained of the evil eye. What about her? She has had more bad luck. 
What can I do about it? And last night, the enemy raided and took away some chickens. <laughs> Why tell me about it? I, I told you how to stop this kind of thing. And the child who was sick died. Uh, I told them what to do about that, too. Oh, my Lord, I am afraid. Oh, listen. What is it? The gods are angry. Look, it's just the rainy season. The river is rising. See? Soon it will overflow the banks. I told him we'd better build a dam. Your charm. It was powerless. My lord. Now, now what? We must speak. About what? You are a false god. I never said I was a god. You have been unable to help us. And against my will. I, I never claimed I, I was... You must and... leave the village. Father! Now? In this rain? The storm is a sign. Of what? From the gods. They realize they have sent us a helpless lord, and so they are recalling you back to the skies. Where do you want me to go? You must leave the village at once. Look, you talk about initiative, referendum, and recall. Father, it's... I shall go with him. No. But I am his wife. He returns to his wife in the sky. Leave us, false god. Leave us. Uh, who are you? I'm Dr. I mean, Captain Wilkes, U.S. Air Force. What? We were notified that you had gone on a plane ride with the Prime Minister and had disappeared, so we got permission to set up an air search. Oh. One of our helicopters spotted the wreckage, and a search team finally found you in the jungle. When? A few days ago. They brought you into the hospital. You're lucky to be alive. You should have been killed by some snake or wild animal. I guess you must have some magic charm. Yeah. Not everybody would agree with that, Doctor. At any rate, you're on your way home and quite a hero. There's nothing really wrong with you that a few days' solid rest won't cure. I wonder. About what? Did I dream it? About the Master and Marilla? Who were they? Did it happen? You were pretty much out of your head when they picked you up. Yes. Must have all been a dream. This is Lynn Longstreet at Dallas International Airport, catching the celebrities on the run as they come to and from our nation's capital. And now to complete a story that started when we caught him going out, here is Senator Bob Blaisdell as we catch him coming back. Senator? Orilla. I beg your pardon, Senator. It's, uh, it's, uh, nothing at all. Well, Senator, did you enjoy the trip? It was very, uh, very instructive. Tell me, as the most eligible bachelor in the Senate, did you break any hearts out there in, uh, oh, what's the name of the place again? Oh, oh, yes, a lesser. Yes, I did. I broke one. Really? Well, give us a beat on the story. Tell me whose. Uh, I'm afraid it was my own. <laughs> Oh, it's Senator Blaisdell. Well, sure, sure, I'll see him. Blaze, come in. Master. Uh, what? Uh, uh nothing. <laughs> what did you just call me? It sounded like, uh, Master. <laughs> Am I such a Simon Legree? No. Everyone's talking about your remarkable adventure. It's great publicity for you, and it rubs off on the party, too. Does it? Oh, yes, it has a magic effect. <laughs> Magic. Funny you should use that word. What's the matter? You look different. Do I? Yeah. How? I don't know. Yes, I do. You look serious. And you know something? I never knew you to look serious before. Well, you just keep it up. It's a great image for you. It'll draw the votes like magic. <laughs> There's that word again. Oh, what word? Magic. Oh. Is that what they want from us, Everett? Magic? Well... Is that what they think we can perform here? <laughs> now you mention it, yes. Yeah, do away with disease, disasters, wars. I guess they'd like that. I guess we haven't come very far along then, have we? From where? Well, we're like gods, Everett. What seems to have gotten into you? Were you bitten by some tropical bug? We are like gods in the powers that they give us. Yeah, well, yes, you could say that. And when they find out that we can't work miracles, they turn us out. 
If we're lucky. Yeah, out into the storm. That's the way it's always been. <laughs> well, now, on a serious note, you might get married now that you're even potential presidential, Timber. Think so? Oh, all the world loves a hero. <laughs> Got a girl in mind? Yes. Well, why don't you marry her? I'm not sure she exists. Oh? And even if she does, she'd be afraid to come here. Blaze, what's come over you? You're a completely different person. Hmm. Everett, will you keep a secret? I've been a god. A god who failed, but a god. And I'll never be the same again. <laughs> Once a god, once one has tasted the nectar and ambrosia of Olympus, never again can mortal food satisfy. But I shall return shortly with a sentiment or two that I hope will bring you some satisfaction. spoken rather loosely and informally about the gods in this adventure. Perhaps it's because we have so many of them in our society. These days, we no longer merely admire celebrities. In many cases, we actually worship them. As the ancients sacrificed the choicest tidbits at their altars and built them the most magnificent temples, so do we ply our own contemporary gods with the very finest material gifts at our disposal. But it was ever thus. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, E.V. Jester, William Griffiths, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.